All right, thank you for watching this project help video for lesson two. I will help you answer each question in the project by providing step-by-step -step instructions using example problems. A good strategy might be to pause the video after each example and then work the corresponding problem in your project. All right, so question one, let's write an equivalent expression using the definition of radicals and exponents. So, so question one in this project says, here's an example, we got a number being raised to a fractional exponent. And then let's go ahead and use what we know to rewrite this using the radicals, all right? So the basic rule is this. If you have a, a, a base being raised to a fraction, you know, so let's call the fraction m over n. Then we can rewrite that as a radical in this way. All right, so the basically what the base is here becomes the base of the radicand. So that stays the same. You see where the x's are. The number in the denominator becomes what we call the index on the radicand. And the number in the numerator becomes the exponent on the base inside the radicand. All right, so let's use, let's go ahead and define some of these terms. All right, so this right here, this entire radical is called the radicand. So you might see that in question two. Radicand. All right, where the n is, this n right here, we call that the index. All right, so this is the base. And then this is just the exponent on the radicand or the exponent on the base. And the reason why is because this expression here, all right, can also be written like this. All right, so that's why that M is either the exponent on the base, like I wrote it here, or the exponent on the radicand as if I wrote it here. All right, so we're gonna use this definition to go ahead and rewrite 36 raised to the 4 eighths power. All right, so one thing that we could do, right, when you have a fraction like this that you can simplify, you can simplify it. All right, so 36, 4 eighths is the same as 1 half. So we can write an equivalent fractions up there. All right, so this is the same as 36 to the 1 half power. All right, so in your answer to this question, right, you're actually going to be picking three choices. One, you're going to simplify it like this. All right, now we're going to use our definition of fractional exponents and radicands, right, <clears throat> to rewrite this expression. All right, so if I'm following this rule here, I'm going to write my radicand. The 36 is the base, so that's going to be inside our radicand right here as the base. The index is the denominator of the fraction, so that's where this 2 is. All right, so I'm going to temporarily put a 2 there. All right, and then now the exponent on the radicand is what's in the numerator. In that case, this is a one. All right, so you won't see the answer written like this, and that's because when we have a square root, right, that does imply that the index is two, but we don't write it, all right? So even though in this case, it's an implied two. In this case, 36 to the first power is just 36. All right, so 36 to the 1 half power, in fact, anything to the 1 half power can be written as the square root of that base. And then in this case, I can simplify further because 36 is a perfect square. And the square root of 36 is just 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. All right, so we get all three of those answers. All right, so uh, let me get to my mouse here. All right, so we get 4 to the 8 simplified to 1 half. I rewrote that as a radicand, and then I simplified my radicand, so we get all three of those answers.
Okay. One, two, and three. Let's go on to question two. So still, we're going to apply those same rules, right, to simplify this fractional exponent. So here it says, identify the values for the index, the base of the radicand, and the exponent of the radicand. And the actual problem that you have in your lesson, you see a table. And it says, hey, 9 is the radical, or the base, or the index, or the exponent on the radicand. So basically, is what you're required to do is take whatever fractional exponent they give you, and let's go ahead and rewrite that. All right, we're going to rewrite that as a radical. All right, so there's my radical. The base right here, the big number, that's the 6. That's always what we call the radicand all right, inside there, the big base there. All right, the index, right? Remember, that is our de in the denominator here. That number is the index. So if I were to rewrite this here, we'd have the index of 4 on our radicand. And then finally, what's in the numerator here is our exponent on our radicand or our exponent on our base. They might say it either way. All right, so in the end, we can see that here, in this case, the 4, that's the index on our radicand. This is the exponent on our base. And this is the base of the radicand. All right, so now let's get to question three. It just says simplify the radical. So we're talking about how to simplify this. Now this is where I do it slightly different than they do in the lesson in your course. All right, so as what I do is I take that number that's underneath the radical there, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sort it into its prime factors, right? So I'm going to make it as a factor tree. So I draw these two little lines, and I'm trying to think of any two numbers I can think of to multiply to 120. All right, so the first two that come to my mind are 12 and 10. But if you chose 2 or 60 or 4 and 30, all those uh, would work out. It doesn't matter, just any two numbers besides 1 and 120 that multiply to 120. All right, now I notice that 12 is not prime, right? It can be broken down into two more numbers. So we're trying to think of anything that multiplies to 12. Okay, well, how about 2 and 6? If you said 4 and 3, it still would have worked out. I notice now that 2 is a prime number because only 1 times 2 is 2, so I can't break that down any farther. So I go ahead and circle it. And then with the 6 here, I'm thinking that's not prime, right? Because it has other factors besides 1 and 6. And those factors are 2 and 3. So notice when I get to the prime numbers, I kind of circle them. Right? So I can't break them down any further because only 1 times 3 is 3. So that's when we know it to stop. All right, 10 isn't prime. It's made up of 2 times 5. All right, so 2 is prime and 5 is prime. Now what I do with that is I go ahead and I'm going to rewrite that number as a product of its prime. So notice I have one, two, it looks like three twos. So I'm going to just put all three of them here. One, two, three. Then I have a three. And I have a five. And yeah, notice if you multiply all of these numbers together, you do get 120. So we haven't changed the value of this, right? We're just rewriting it a different way. Now is what we do is I'm looking for pairs. Right? So this is determined by the index, again, right, on the radicand. I'm going to change colors here. So in this case, the index, I don't have one, right? But remember, that really is an implied 2, right? When we're taking the square root of something, there's an implied 2 as our index. And so what that is telling me is that we're looking for two of a kinds to pull out underneath our radical. So wherever I have a two of a kind, I'm going to circle it. And so I have a two of a kind right there. And I, I, I'm looking for more pairs, but in this case, I don't have any. All right, so because I have a pair here, right, I can pull one out of the radicand. So I pull it out. All right, and what's left underneath the radical 
is 2 times 3 times 5. So go ahead and say 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So remember, if, where I got that 30 was I multiplied those three numbers. And then I, brought, I had a pair, so I brought it out. All right, and there's no more pairs. There's nothing I can make. So there, I simplify that radical. So that's what they want you to do for question three, right? They don't want you to go on a calculator and punch in the square root of 120 or whatever number they give you and then tell me that it's like 11 point something something. This is what they mean by simplify the radical.